How you doing, good people? This is the 8-Bit Animal. And today we're going to talk about another thing based on a storybook or something like that. It still falls under that same category as Color a Dinosaur, where it's barely a game. But this is more of a game than Color a Dinosaur was. I still have beef with Color a Dinosaur. Today we're going to look at something from THQ before they were known as a thing. Um, when they were still called Toy Head Toy Headquarters, which is what THQ stood for. That's your little bit of trivia for the day. We're going to take a look at the Great Waldo Search. Now, the Great Waldo Search isn't a long game. It's like six levels. Um, it's basically puzzles based on uh, pages from the third Where's Waldo book. And you control a little magnifying glass and you move that magnifying glass around those pages looking for Waldo, looking for uh, clues that the wizard asks you to look for, looking for Waldo's dog. You find Waldo's dog, you get a bonus level where Waldo's dog is on a flying carpet and you're collecting point, at point bonuses or whatever. Um, it's sparse. It's basic, but it kind of serves a purpose. Um, it helps you with problem solving skills. And the Waldo books are good for helping you just helping your observation skills, honestly. And that's what this game is designed to do. Now, does it ex execute it perfectly? Mm, kind of, sort of, not really, but it does okay. Um... Music is yuck, uh, and the graphics are kind of muddy, but they work. Uh, you solve one, you find one thing, and then it leads you to looking for something else. It gives you a clue, and then you keep going until you find Waldo in the puzzle. And Waldo can you Waldo can be barely visible, just kind of head poking out, whatever. There's also a puzzle that's just a series of pictures of Waldo and you have to find Waldo or find Waldo's shoe and stuff like that in there. Like I said, it's barely a game, but it's more of a game than Color a Dinosaur. And it's an interesting take on the Where's Waldo book series. Um, this got released on Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, I want to say Game Boy Color also. I don't know how this will work on it. Well, actually, this was before the Game Boy Color, so on the original Game Boy. I don't know how this will work on the original Game Boy, but here you are. Um, but yeah, this game... This game is okay. It's cool to have on your shelf, I guess, for a distraction or a change of pace from Contra and Strider and stuff like that. But the problem is the resale price. Now, prices start at about 10 bucks, but commonly it runs for about 25 to 30 bucks. I I would 10 bucks is okay for this game. I can't see it going for more than more than 15. And I definitely can't wrap my brain around it being more than 20. But yeah, it, it's an okay thing. Um, it, like I said, it's barely a video game. But it executes what it sets out to do well. Well, okay. Um... And there are enough versions of it to float a, that that are all over the place. And I'm pretty sure the versions for the Genesis and Super Nintendo may actually be a little more cost effective. I'm not sure, though. The Genesis had a whole lot of shovelware on it. So, good luck. This has been the 8-Bit Animal. And I'll catch you beautiful people tomorrow. You know, if that clown wasn't so cheap, we wouldn't be dealing with this rodent problem. 
But yet here we are. 